be crazy or perfectly prepared to shut yourself up in the kitchen with a homicidal mania. He isn't. You've only got to look at him, disease bomb. He isn't, Charles. He is just unhappy. He isn't dangerous. I'd know if he were dangerous. And anyway, I could take care of myself. That's what Mrs. Boyle oh, said. Just don't! What is there between you and that wretched boy? What do you mean by between us? I'm sorry for him, that's all. Perhaps you've met him before. Perhaps you suggested to him to come here and that you both pretend to meet for the first time. All cooked up between you, wasn't it? Charles, have you gone out of your mind? You're, you're being out. How dare you suggest those things? Rather odd, isn't it? Very strange that he should come to stay in an out of the way place like this. You know, harder than that. Miss Casewell or Mrs. Boyle or Major Metcalf should. You know, I read once in a paper that these homicidal cases were able to attract women. Looks as though it were true. When did you first know him? How long has this been going on? You'll be absolutely ridiculous. I never set eyes on Christopher Red until he arrived yesterday. That's what you say. But perhaps you've been running up to London to meet him on the sly. You know perfectly well I haven't been up to London for weeks. You haven't been up to London for weeks. Is that so? What do you mean? It's quite true. Is it? And what's this? This is one of the gloves you were wearing yesterday. You dropped it. I picked it up this afternoon while I was talking to Sergeant Trotter. Um, uh, do you see what's inside it? A London bus ticket. What? That? So, it seems you didn't only go to the village yesterday, you went to London as well. All right. Whilst I was safely away, racing around the countryside. Whilst you were racing around the countryside. Come on, admit it, you went to London. All right. I went to London. So did you. What? So did you. You brought back an evening paper. Where'd you get hold of that? It was in your overcoat pocket. Anyone could have put it there. Did they? No. You were in London. All right, I was in London, but I didn't go to meet a woman there. Did you? Are you sure you didn't? What do you mean? Go away. Don't come near me. Molly, well, what's the Don't matter? Don't touch me! Did you go to London yesterday to meet Christopher Wren? Don't be a fool. Of course then I did. Why did you go? I should tell you that just now. Perhaps I've forgotten why I went. Molly, Molly, what's come over you? I you're different all of a sudden. I, I feel as if I don't even don't even know you anymore. Perhaps you never did know me. You've been married how long? Just a year. But you don't really know anything about me. What I've done, or thought, or felt, or suffered before you knew me. Molly, you're crazy. Oh, right, I'm crazy. Perhaps it's fun to be crazy. What on earth? Now, you now, I do hope you young people are both not saying a little more than you mean. One is so apt to in these lovers' quarrels. Lovers' quarrels, that's good. Quite so, quite so. I know just how you feel. I've been through all this myself when I was a younger man. Jeunesse, jeunesse, as the poet says. Not been very long, I imagine. That's none of your business, Mr. Padovacini. No, no, no. No business at all. But I just came into this in to say that the sergeant cannot find his keys. I'm afraid he's very annoyed. Christopher. Well, I was wondering if you have by chance moved them, Mr. Ralston. Ah, uh, no, of course not. Mr. Ralston, Mrs. Ralston, have you removed my skis from the cupboard back where we put them? Certainly not. Somebody's taken them. What made you happen to look for them? The smell is so high. I need help here. Reinforcements. I was going to scare them to the police station at Market Hampton to report on the situation. And now you can't. Dear, dear, if somebody's seen to it, that you certainly shan't do that. But there could be another reason, could there? Yes. What? Somebody may want to get away. What did you mean when you said Christopher just now? 
So our young architect has hooked it, has he? Very, very interesting. Is this true, Mrs. Ralston? Oh, thank goodness you haven't gone after all. Have you taken my tea, Mr. Ring? Your tea, Sergeant? No, why should I? Mrs. Ralston well, seems to think. Well, Mr. Ring, um, well, Christopher Wren is very fond of skiing. I thought he might have taken them to get a little exercise. <laughs> exercise. <laughs> now listen, you people, this is a serious matter. Someone has taken my only chance at communication with the outside world. I want everyone in here at once. I think Miss Caswell has gone upstairs. Okay. Let's Major Metcalf in the dining room. Major Metcalf! He's not there now. I'll try and find him. Sergeant, 
that I'm not a homicidal maniac? So difficult to prove a negative and suppose instead that I am the maniac. Mm -hmm. Don't. Well, such a gay little too, don't you think? She's cut off their tails with a carving knife. Snick, snick, snick. Delicious. Just what a little child would adore. <laughs> cool little things, children. Some of them never grow up. Stop frightening my wife at once. I'm sorry. It's silly of me, but... You see, I found her, and her face was all purple. I just can't forget it. I know. It's difficult to forget things, isn't it? And you aren't really forgetting her. I must go up to the kitchen. Sergeant, I was just having a little innocent fun. I've always been fond of a little joke. There's nice fun, and there's fun that's not so nice. You know, I do wonder what you mean by that, Sergeant. You know, I've been doing a little wondering about you, sir. Indeed? I've been wondering how that car of yours happened to get stuck in a snowdrift so conveniently. Inconveniently, don't you, Sergeant? I'd rather depend on the way you're looking at it. Just where were you headed for, by the way, when you had this little accident? Oh, I was on my way to see a friend. In this neighborhood? Not so very far from here. What's the name and address of this friend of yours? Now, really, Sergeant Carter, does that matter now? I mean, it has nothing to do with this predicament, has it? We always like to pull this information. Well, what did you say your friend's name was? I didn't say. No, you didn't. There's a pit you're not going to. Now that's very interesting. But there could be so many reasons. Under more discretion, these jealous husbands. Rather old to be running around with the ladies at your time of life, aren't you? Perhaps I am not quite as old as I look. Now, that's just what I've been thinking. What? That you're not as old as you try to look. There's lots of people going around trying to look younger than they are. But when someone tries to look older, hmm, does make one ask oneself why? Having asked questions of so many people, you're asking questions of yourself as well. Isn't that overdoing things? I might get an answer from me, but I don't get any from you. Well, well, try again. That is, if you have any more questions to ask. One or two. So where were you headed for, by the way? Where were you coming from? You had this little action. That is simple. From London. What address in London? I always stay at the Ritz Hotel. Oh, very nice too, I'm sure. And your permanent address? I dislike permanency. Your business or profession? I play the markets. Stockbroker? No, no, no. You misunderstand huh. me. You're enjoying this little game, aren't you? And sure of yourself too. But I wouldn't be too sure. You're mixed up in a murder case, and don't you forget it. Murder isn't just fun and games. Not, not even this murder. <laughs> Dear me, Sergeant Trotter, you're very serious. I always thought policemen were to have a sense of humor. Is the Inquisition over for the moment? For the moment. Thank you very much. I shall return to the drawing room and look for your skis there, just in case someone is Address? No. How long have you been in England? A week. 
And you've been staying since your arrival? At the Ledbury Hotel, nice bridge. What brought you to my soul manor, Miss Casewell? I wanted some place quiet. In the country. How long did you or do you purpose to remain here? Until I finished what I came here to do. And what was that? And what was that? Eh? And what was it you came here to do? I beg your pardon. I was thinking of something else. You haven't answered my question. I don't think you know why I should. It's a matter that concerns me alone. A strictly private affair. All the same. No, yes. I don't think we'll argue about it. Would you mind telling me your age? Not in the least. It's on my passport. I'm 24. 24? You are thinking I look older. Which is quite true. Is there anyone in this country who can vouch for you? My bank can reassure you as to my financial position. I'm, and I can also refer you to a solicitor, a, a discreet gentleman. I'm not in a position to alter your <laughs> social reference. I've lived most of my life abroad. In Mallorca? In Mallorca. And other places. Were you born abroad? No. I left England when I was 13. You know, Miss Casewell, I can't quite make you out. Does it matter? I don't know. What are you doing here? Seems to worry you. It doesn't worry me. You say you left England when you were 13? 12, 13, thereabouts. Was your name Casewell then? It's my name now. What was your name then? Come on, tell me. What are you trying to prove? I want to know what your name was when you left England. It's a long time ago. I, I've forgotten. There are things one doesn't forget. Possibly. Unhappiness? Despair? I dare say. What's your real name? I told you. Leslie Margaret Catherine Casewell. Catherine? What are you doing here? I don't know. <laughs> I never should have come here. <laughs> I always thought the police weren't allowed to give people a third degree. I've merely been interrogating this case well. You seem to have upset her. What did he do? breakfast like the Red Queen? Oh, uh, yes, it's rather like that. Dear me, you look as though you've seen a ghost. I've seen something you ought to have seen before. Blind as a bat, I've been, but I believe now we may be able to get somewhere. Ah, the police have a clue. Yes, at last, the police have a clue. I want everyone assembled here again. You know who they are? Um... Giles and Molly are in the kitchen. I've been helping Major Metcalf to look through your skis. We've looked at some of the most entertaining places, but to no avail. <laughs> I don't know where Parvachini is. I'll get him to the others. Mr. Parvachini! <laughs> Mr. Parvachini! Parvachini! Policeman has lost his skis and doesn't know where to find them. <laughs> Leave him alone and they'll come home dragging a murderer behind them. <laughs> <laughs> what is it now? Sit down, Major. Mrs. Ralston. Must I come now? Very convenient. There are more important things than meals at the moment, Mrs. Ralston. Mrs. Boyle, for instance, won't be wanting another meal. That's a very tactless way of putting things, Sergeant. I'm sorry, but I want cooperation. I intend to get it. Mr. Olson, would you please go up and ask Miss Casewell to come down again? She went up to her room. Tell her, tell her if only me for a few minutes. You'll speak with Tom, Sergeant. No, but I will 
say I have a very shrewd suspicion as to who took them and why. I won't say any more at the moment. Please don't. I always think explanations should be to the very end. For the exciting last chapter, you know. <laughs> this isn't a game, sir. Uh, now, there I think you're wrong. This is a game to somebody. You think the murderer isn't enjoying himself? Maybe. Maybe. Now, will you all pay attention, please? You may remember that at the time the murder took place, I took statements from you all. These statements relate to your positions at the time the murder was committed. The statements are as follows. Mrs. Ralston in the kitchen. Mr. Perivicini playing with piano in the drawing room. Mr. Ralston in his bedroom. Mr. Rand, ditto. Miss Casewell in the library. Major Metcalf in the cellars. Correct. These are the statements you made. I have no means of checking on these statements. They may be true, they may not. To put it quite clearly, five of these statements are true, one does not. Which one? Five of you are speaking the truth, one is lying. I have a plan that may help me discover the liar. And if I discover that one of you lied to me, then I know who the murderer is. Not necessarily. Someone may have lied for some other reason. I rather doubt that. But what's the idea? You've just said that you've got no means of checking these statements. No. But supposing we were to go through these actions a second time. Ah, that old chestnut. Reconstruction of the crime. That's a foreign idea. Not a reconstruction of the crime, Mr. Paravicini. A reconstruction of the, of the movements of apparently innocent persons. And what do you hope to gain by that? You will forgive me if I don't make that quite clear at the moment. Do you want to repeat the performance? Yes, I do. It's a trap. What do you mean it's a trap? It's a trap, I know it is. I only want people to do exactly as I did before. But I don't see, I can't see what you hope to find out by just making people do the same things they did before. I think it's nonsense. Do you, Mr. Rand? Well, you can count me out. I'm too busy in the kitchen. You can't count anybody out. <coughs> One of my goals believe you're all guilty by the looks of you. Why are you so unwilling? Of course, what you say goes, Sergeant. I mean, eh, eh Molly? Very well. Mr. Casewell? Yes. Rand? Madame Achini. Oh, yes, I consent. Major. Yes. Are all to do exactly as we did before? The same actions will be performed. Yes. Then I will, I will return to the drawing room and one finger once again take out the signature tune of a murder. Tom, dum, Not dumb. quite so fast, Mr. Paragini. Do you play piano, Mrs. Ralston? Yes, I do. And you know the tune of Three Blind Mice? Do we all know it? Then you can pick it out on the finger on the piano with one finger, just as Mr. Paragini did. Good. Please go into the drawing room, sit at the piano, and be ready to play when I give you the signal. Sergeant Trotter, I understood we were each to repeat our former roles. The same roles will be performed, but not necessarily by the same people. Thank you, Mrs. Olsen. Now you all pay attention, and I will give you your new roles. Mr. Paravicini, would you please go up to Mr. Wren's room by the back stairs is the most convenient way? Mr. Wren, would you please go to the kitchen? Just keep an eye on Mrs. Ralston's dinner for her. I believe you're very fond of cooking. Major Metcalf, would you go up to Mr. Ralston's room and examine the telephone head? Ms. Caseloff, would you go down to the cellars? Mr. Wren will show you the way. Unfortunately, I need someone to reproduce my own actions. I'm sorry to ask it of you, Mr. Ralston, but would you please go out of the window and trace the telephone line around to the front door? It's a bit of a chilly job, but I'm afraid you're the toughest one here. And what are you going to do? I'm an acting part of Mrs. Boyle. Taking rather a risk, aren't you? 
You are to go to your stations and remain there until you hear me call. Apologies. No objection to my learning in code. I should advise it, sir. Mrs. Ralston, count 20, then begin to play. Jimmy died. That nasty, cruel woman killed him. They put her in prison. Prison wasn't bad enough for her. I said I'd kill her one day, and I did too. In the fog. It was great fun. I hope Jimmy knows. I'd kill them all one day. That's what I said when I'd grown up. Because grown ups can do anything they like. I'm going to kill you in a moment. You'd better not. You'd never get safely away, you know. Someone's taken my skis. I can't find them. But it doesn't really matter. I'm tired. It's been such fun watching you and pretending to be a policeman. That revolver will make a lot of noise. 
Yes, it, it will, rather. Then it can do it the usual way and take you by the neck. The last little mouse caught in the trap. Georgie! Georgie! You remember me, don't you? Don't you remember the farm, Georgie? The animals! And the battle pig! And the day the bulls chase us across the field? And the dogs! Dogs? Yes, Spot, complain. Kathy? Yes, Kathy. You remember me now, don't you? But, but, K K Kathy, what are you doing here? I, I came here to England to find you. I didn't recognize you until you pulled your ear the way you always used to do. Yes, you always did. Now come with me. You're coming with me. Where, where, where are we going? Don't worry. I'm going to take you somewhere where they'll look after you. See that you won't do any more harm. Ralston! Ralston! Molly! It was Trotter. He's mad. Quite mad. Yes, but you, you all right? I was mixed up in it all. I taught the school. It wasn't my fault, but he thought I could have saved that child. You should have told me. Everything is under control. He'll be unconscious soon with a sedative. His sister's looking after him. Poor fellow's as mad as a hatter, of course. I had my suspicions of him all along. You did? Didn't you believe he was a policeman? I knew he wasn't a policeman. You see, Mrs. Ralston, I'm a policeman. You? As soon as we got a hold of that notebook with Monkswell Manor written on it, we saw it was vital to have someone on the spot. When it was put to him, Major Metcalf took me to let me come in his place. I couldn't understand it when Trotter showed up. And Casewell was his sister. Yes. It seems she recognized it just before this last business. Didn't know what to do, but fortunately came to me about it. Just in time, too. Well, it's starting to fall. Help should be here on the way. By the way, Mrs. Ralston, I'll remove those skis. I hid them atop the four poster. That's not a pair of chini. <laughs> I imagine they'll examine that card of his rather thoroughly. <laughs> Wouldn't you be surprised if they found a thousand or so Swiss watches in the spare wheel? <laughs> yes, that's his line of business. Nasty little bit of goods. You know. Molly, Charles, I'm... what were you doing in London yesterday? Darling, I was buying you an anniversary present. That's what I was doing in London, but I didn't want you to know. No. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it? 
The girl in the shop said it was the last thing in hats. <laughs> Mrs. Ralston, Mrs. Ralston, come quickly. There's a smell of burning coming from the kitchen. Oh, my pie! 